All right, what's up? I'm back in my dad's garage here in uh, Lady Lake, right down the street from OGHQ. And what we're going to do today is install a wall air, FIAC wall air compressor, All right? So uh, I've had this on the agenda for a long time, I just haven't gotten it done. Uh, and so this is a you know tire filler type compressor. You're not going to run anything major off of this, but for 400 bucks to have a you know on wall really clean. Uh, it has compressor hose and everything built in, hose reel built into one one device. Uh, we'll kind of show you how it works. One of the disadvantages to it is that you, you know, it doesn't have a tank. You know, there's no room to put a tank in this little device uh, and so it runs it just runs constantly so you don't we wouldn't want to be using this to do any major uh, air compressor projects plus you know the output is, is rather minimal um, you know it's a little one one horsepower motor uh, and um, I forget what the output is but it's uh, yeah it's 5.6 CFM uh, but my guess is that you know that that's uh, that that's a little bit overstated on on the actual output. But you know you're not going to want to again plan to do anything significant. Filling up bike tires, filling up uh, car tires, blowing off something out of the engine bay or something like that, which is perfect for this garage because my dad doesn't my dad doesn't need a lot in this garage because HQ is a mile down the road, so he can go and you know we have everything we need down there to do oil changes and work on engines and change exhausts and stuff like that so anyway let's get started so you can see how this works here there's a little bracket and this bracket you know there's a little the little extra to hang accessories and stuff uh, but this bracket will hang on the wall i gotta when he gets here i'm gonna figure out where he, where he wants to put it but the bracket fits on the wall and then there's a big uh big metal uh, bolt it slides down and holds this, you know, into place, and then it will swivel, swivel from left to right. And so we'll tap on this to the wall, and then basically just put the unit in place, run the wires, and and get it all set up. So that's our plan. Uh, and then um, uh, we're going to use something that really isn't isn't necessary, but these fit best uh, is to do these larger uh, three eighths uh, three eighths tap cons. Uh, and so, again, significant overkill, uh, but at least we know it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and so we'll measure this out, use the uh, little Milwaukee SDS, drill a nice 3 8 hole, and, uh, and mount this in place. So the stuff it comes with, I don't know that I would suggest. You know, it comes with these kind of weird uh, drywall anchor things, that I, which I wouldn't suggest. And it comes with a little, little air, little... Uh, air device it also comes with a uh, with a quick disconnect which i've taken off because uh, we're going to put a prevost fitting on here uh, and my suggestion is going to be anybody who buys this um, from us that we do a uh, prevost because the one that comes on there is junk i've already taken that off this was the test unit the one that i used to kind of test out uh, and so we'll grab a, a prevost coupler on this so we can attach things to it all right so the you can see the fitting that comes with the wall there that had it in the cabinet over there. It's kind of junk. Uh, so we're going to take this off over here. So we're going to take this. Oh, I already took this off, and we're going to put a Prevost um, ESI 07201 SW, which is the swiveling quarter-inch swiveling coupler, uh, and we're going to stick with high flow. So if you do buy this, just know that uh, when you when you set this thing up that if you buy this thing and you plan on just using the one that comes with it, uh, that this is Euro High Flow. Uh, and so you're going to want to buy some plugs. And you can see what a Euro High Flow connection looks like. I mean, this comes from Italy, direct, to uh, Houston. And then we ship them, we buy them, and stock them, and ship them. But you'll notice the whole size here of the of the Euro High Flow is much bigger than a standard industrial fitting. So buy some of these, they're like $1.25 or $2 or something like that. So you'll buy some of these to put on your tools. Uh, we'll show you some of that as well. And so the Euro High Flow fittings, they, they are higher flowing because the hole is a little bigger. And there are many, many different standards and the size of the fitting, so you need to make sure you have the right one. We don't want to be in a, in a mortar joint. Right. So figuring it this, this is the top. Just put it right there because that way all our holes, our holes will be here. Yeah. And then this, here's the joint here, mm -hmm. and then these holes will be there. Got it. 
think. Yeah. Let's let's test fit it because we'll make sure that it doesn't swing and smack the cabinet. So let's put our bolt through here. Well, it doesn't matter if it hits the cabinet because that's... Yeah, you're probably not going to be pulling it out anyway. It's going to not be the angles that don't really matter much, but... Kind of loose, loose fit that there. It's a lot heavier than it looks. So what you're saying right here? Yeah, right about there. So, yeah, see, it doesn't matter if it hits. Because it's always going to be coming this way. Right. And actually, it can kind of rest up against the cabinet there, right. and not in use. That's what I'm figuring. It's okay. Right. And so we already drilled out the holes here. Because the holes are smaller, designed for use with their drywall anchors, which of course, I don't think you want to mount this to drywall. I think you want to mount this to concrete. And then we're going to use the uh, Milwaukee little STS drill. Drill out our holes. Oh, you got a level. I'm in love with this SDS stuff. I hope this is the right. There we go. It's a Milwaukee bit. Yeah, well, there's SDS Plus and SDS Pro. And this is SDS Plus. How the heck do you get that, that I don't know how you're going to get a level because. It's not straight. Um, there's, no, there's no flat. Anything huh. on it. Yeah. So you're just gonna have to eyeball what I got. So well we could mark the line. Oh no, because the lines aren't straight either. Nope. Yeah, you just gotta eyeball it. Mm, kick the bottom down to the right a little bit. A little bit more. A little more. Now, yeah, go back to the left. Oh, right there, right there, right there. I like Just that. Put one in. I like that. Just put one in and then we'll eyeball it from there. We'll tighten it up. We'll snug it up. And then we can walk back and look at it. You know? Yeah, I guess we can throw our SDS bit right through there, huh? All right. So the cool thing about an SDS drill is this is the... The, the hammer function is a lot more uh, a lot more distance, so it moves slower and more controlled than using a traditional hammer drill. See how awesome that is? I mean, that would take five times longer on a whatever you call it. Are we going to put this thing on here, do you think? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, do, I was debating that. I don't know. I don't, I don't really no. think we need to, but that, I mean, see, it's, it's, it would hold this behind there if we put it behind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Let's put it on there then and see what it looks like. We can always take it off. I don't love the drive-in tap cons on cinder blocks. Let's not torque it with this right here. Home, yeah. Right. And we'll hand tighten it with a. See, I feel like it breaks up the cinder block. Of course, a uh, ratchet, so we can just. It's kind of straight. Sort of straight. So this is my first. I mean, I haven't really used this at all because I got the giant FIAC at my garage, but. How does that look? Straight? You eyeball it. In your garage, you got to live with it. Gosh, this thing's amazing. Well, let's just do it right. It's so much quieter. You, you, people, you got to get this thing. It's freaking great. I have it in the store. In case you're wondering. You get your wall air and your SDS drill at the same time.
Yeah, I gotta get a. I ordered all the like the little hex bits and all that stuff this past week. Next up, we'll be chasing all the uh, drill bits and saw blades and all that. Gosh, that thing is amazing. Now I know why people were yelling at me when I was dismissing it on that video. I was like, ah, we don't need that. The guys are like, look, if you've never used an STS drill, you don't know what you're missing. But clearly, we don't need three eighths inch anchors for this job, but it fits better. You gotta be careful when you tighten it down that you don't break the plastic. It doesn't need to be hammered tight. That's about all we need. I'd say that's not going anywhere. Let's clean up the Swiss tracks real fast. I haven't been procrastinating on this for so long. It's, it's, this has been in my brain for six months. You know, we've had these in the store for three months now, and I've been wanting to do a video somewhere, and just haven't done it. So the reason you're not mounting it over here is because when you get out of the car, you don't want to smack your head on it, if that makes sense. So we're going to have to run the power cord over here to our little junction box thing. Here. So I'd say it weighs like... We'll probably have the weight in the store, but it's like 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Professional install. This power cord will run down around the back. How many of these things do we have? Uh, right now we have probably a thousand. Yeah. Your switch here, a little ball. You can adjust this if we don't want this to run so long, but I think you're right. I think we stick with this thing. I don't know the coupler's not going to fit on there, but it'll kind of hang out in the back like that. Man, I don't remember how to shoot a video anymore without a camera crew. So you got a bottom nut to put on, hold it in place. Even though it'll probably pretty well stay there like it is. So clearly if you want this to swing left and right the entire way, then you wouldn't want to put it so close to the cabinet. So like with, just like with your Tapcons, you know, it's plastic, so you don't want to rip into it. Okay, so let's put our coupler on the end here. So you got a anti-kink spring on the end. Did you bring any Teflon tape? So then we're, we're gonna put the uh, swiveling, swiveling coupler on this thing. So we pull our cover behind. This is quarter inch thread, so you need a quarter inch coupler. So you can do a quarter inch straight Prevost or a quarter inch fluid swiveling. How oh, awesome this thing. Now this thing is like a hundred bucks, but you know, aluminum bodied, full, amazing swiveling. I don't think it'll really be super critical. Any electrical tape in there? I'm not gonna use electrical tape as thread tape, but use it to hold this thing on. Look how clean that looks. Just want to get it on itself. And then one of the little secret tricks here with this, in order to keep the cover from sliding on the body of this, we have to tape it afterward. You can't tape it before. 
So to keep this, what is this thing called? A uh, joint cover or something? The name is eluding me. I'm just gonna do this in the air, floating like this. Things I do for the camera. And then people yell at me. You don't even know how to use tools. So I'm trying to get it on camera, bro. Chill out. Yeah, I don't like that Teflon tape. I mean, this doesn't have to be rock tight. I'm getting you know, 80, 90 PSI on this thing. And then, credit my friend Nick Jones for coming up with this idea. We're gonna take some electrical tape and we're gonna make the body of this a little fatter. I'm gonna come right on the base of it. Can I not do this straight? That's why. That's the nice part about having a fluid coupler. I'm gonna make it nice and pretty. Pretty straight. How many is that? That's four, I think five wraps will do it. And then that will help hold this on a little better. Help keep it from sliding around. This is when you yell about your having to modify your hundred dollar coupler. I like I like making things better. See now it it's kind of hard to get on, but then it will be hard to get off as well. So I'll keep that in place. And there's our coupler. And then, in Euro High Flow to Euro High Flow. And the beauty of this type of coupler is that it's a double release. So once we air this thing up, if I want to remove this, I can actually push the button and then remove it. Whereas, you know, a normal air chuck, you'd have to kind of hold, push down in order to get it to release. And so now, be wary, this is not a quiet machine. It's not quiet and it doesn't turn off. It doesn't have, you know, auto stop start like our... What is this for? Vacuum. Like our pressure washers have. There's no tank here. So this thing is, you know, it hums along here pretty loud. But, you know, it outputs a good 4 or 5 CFM. loud, but you're only going to use it when you're using it. Right. Then, you, then you turn it off. Right. Not bad at all. But remember, there's no tank, so once it's off, there's no more air. It only produces air when it's on. And even, you know, for blowing out stuff, it's not a great, you know, because there's no tank. It's really for filling up tires. You can do an air chalk. And so this is what it's really best for. Filling up rafts, inner tubes, stuff like that. So there's your air compressor. It has, uh, shoot, how long do we say this was? It's like 35 feet, I believe. Has a little yellow. So let me see how long this thing is. So this is a 20 by 20 garage. Just to give you a frame of reference, I'm out here 20 feet past the, so I could fill up tires wherever I needed to. So it's clearly going to solve a problem in any normal size garage. You know, if I go wall to wall. So if I come over here, you know, you have plenty of room to get all the way around the car, all the way to the other side of the garage, you know, with plenty to spare.
kind of give you a, a frame of reference for how this thing does. Just controlled. It's not easy coil like a Cox reel, so you do have to manage it. Let me stow it. And we'll probably set it up like this. All right, let's run a power cord. Actually, no, how do we get that lucky? There's only one on this side. That's where we need it to be. So, I'm going to run it somewhere over here. Something like that. Whatever you think. All right, so that's our wall there. I wanted to I wanted to make sure you knew what it sounded like. You know, it's not it's not a quiet machine, so you need to keep that in mind when you're purchasing. That this thing makes some noise, and you have to be prepared for that. Uh, but just to give you a frame of reference, I'll walk the other side of the garage. It's quieter than a normal air compressor. And remember, the microphone tends to blow it out of proportion, but if I'm 20 feet away, that's what it sounds like. Probably a little bit quieter than what you're hearing in person. But just, you know, I want you to know what, it, what it's like. I think it's a neat little machine for what we're going to use it for. So, you know, we stock these at HQ and we can outfit them, you know, however you want. I mean, I think the best thing to do would be to either get a swiveling coupler or, I mean, even this, the swiveling coupler is certainly not necessary for this. Probably just do a straight coupler. The straight coupler still swivels. Just take this, this section out of it and put, put that coupler on. Um, you wouldn't have the nice little jacket. That's the word I was looking for, the little rubber jacket to cover up things. But, you know, if you wanted to do the ultimate combo, you would do this. And then you have yourself a nice little on-wall um, solution for filling tires, filling up your, you know, if you're like Michelle, she's always getting some sort of unicorn raft or some crap that we have to blow up, uh, filling up, uh, you know, footballs, basketballs, things like that. Uh, so anyway, you'll probably want to get some accessories like a, like an air chuck. We have these from uh, PCL uh, or you know blow uh, you know blow gun. This is going to have a tough time with blow guns, but it'll do you know some some small tasks. Basically, what you do is you blow a little bit, wait three seconds, let the airline fill back up, blow a little more. You know because this is going to you know a, a blow gun is going to use you know three, four, five, six, seven cfm at a time. Um, but remember, Euro high flow. Is the standard fitting on here, so you want to keep that in mind that your standard uh, fittings from Home Depot aren't going to work. You're going to need to get some high flow fittings from me. Uh, and then maybe even get like a, the PCL tire inflator, the digital one that we have, the Akira one. Uh, we didn't, I didn't bring one over here today. But anyway, yeah, we have these. I like it. It's a neat little thing uh, for those of you who need something like this for your garage. Thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'll keep coming up with these little projects to uh, show you this stuff.